Hello everyone, welcome to uh, Linux for Beginners Workshop. Our seminar presentation today is on open source software for solutions for education in Fiji. And uh, I'm Dr. Ritaj Chandra from School of Computing and um, Information and Mathematical Sciences. And I'm also the president of uh, Software Foundation Fiji and one of the founding members. So the outline for today's talk is um, uh, we'll talk about uh, w what open source software is and some of the, the, the different types of open source software, some of the features there such as multimedia apps and uh, also about Software Foundation Fiji and uh, generally about ICT and education in Fiji and some of the challenges we have. Uh, what is uh, open source software? F uh, the first word there is free. So yeah, actually the Software is available for free of charge, and you can use it, study it, change it, change it, and improve it. By changing and improving, it means that, for example, you take Mozilla Firefox, which is an example of a free and open source software, and you can have a Hindi language, Fiji Hindi language version of it, or an Ethiopian language version of it. And similarly, as Linux Mint 17, you can have a, a Ethiopian language version of it. I'm sure that there's a Hindi version already available there. So Hindi is not a problem. The problem is the Toki language. Is, uh, um, it is not spoken as on that level of Hindi. Uh, in Hindi, there's already support from India. So it is free. And uh, note while force is free, installation and maintenance services by technicians can be charged. And there can be, for example, workshops. I don't think that anywhere in the world you will have a Linux one day workshop for $40. Okay? It's impossible. Usually such workshops will cost you $400, or 500, $400 to $500 per person. Um, but we are doing some things in a different way. Uh, uh, usually Linux administrators are one of the most highly paid people in the, in the ICT sector. And uh, they are the people who maintain servers and of course you have to pay them to do so and if you are in somebody is installing linux for you if it is uh, some personal from software foundation in fiji then that is a volunteer service right you can make an appointment and we'll install it on your computer for free but if there's uh, some company out there for example uh, i don't want to name any company anyways they are they are going to charge and it can be 50 dollars to 500 dollars depending on how they will sell it Okay, so uh, some of the examples, of course, of uh, open source software, Mozilla, I already said, Firefox, um, Google Chrome, uh, and uh, there are uh, the, all the Linux, different flavors of Linux, uh, some of the uh, content management system, Typo3, USP's uh, website is in Typo3, there's Joomla, FNU's website is in Joomla, and the government of Fiji uses <coughs> mainly Joomla. Uh, Drupal, Drupal is also very popular, uh, and uh, of course WordPress, some of the uh, PostgreSQL and MySQL, uh, the server softwares, PHP for example, uh, the server, and uh, many others. So Ubuntu is one of the most used Linux operating system, and the Linux Mint that is in this uh, lab is actually built on Ubuntu. Okay, and Ubuntu is actually built on uh, Debian, and Debian is built on the Linux kernel. And the Linux kernel is of course uh, inspired and also built on the Unix kernel. So uh, you can see the generation of uh, uh, transformation there. So here is a diagram of uh, which shows uh, some of the examples of the closed source softwares. For example, the famous one, um, Apple software it used to be very close and it is still is closed. Uh, uh, make a free is there and some others and also Windows operating system closed source. Uh, what closed source actually means that you do not know the building blocks that have produced the software, the building blocks that means the programming code and other things that is behind the screen, behind the graphical user interface. You don't have access to that. 
So a closed source software, if you are installing in your organization, if you really don't have access to the building blocks, you do not really know that behind the, behind the source, there can be some sub-programs there that can be stealing some uh, confidential information of your organization. And this is one of the reasons that uh, most of the, that Linux is now being very popular in some of the government departments around the world because uh, you have confidential information and you want to build your own uh, operating system and you know the software code that is there. So, um, uh, of course, Linux is, uh, if it, it is open source, it gives you the flexibility to change and transform. So there are so many different flavors of Linux and Ubuntu, as, you, as we have discussed, but the other popular ones are Suzy, OpenSUSE, Fedora, uh, Mandrave, and the Linux uh, Red Hat is the, the commercial package, so you have to actually buy it. <coughs> Otherwise, the rest, Debian, and the rest are free. So it, for each of these, there are every year or every two years or every six months, there's an update, there's a distribution. So for example, we have now Linux Mint 17. This is the 17th version of uh, since the Mint started. So the in interesting part is adoption. We don't hear about uh, mm -hmm. Linux in Fiji. Why are we caring about it as an organization and why was this organization formed was actually because we found it very interesting uh, as it is being adopted all around the world in very important organizations. So for example, in 2005, government of Peru says all government officers will be using Linux, right? So they are, of course, then the other thing is the cost factor. If the government is saving millions of dollars in software, then it can of course maintain, use that money to maintain the roads and the hospitals, which is a problem here in our country, right? So uh, the other Indian government, Malaysian uh, public sector, the interesting part is uh, city. Munich in uh, Germany has migrated to force. They are fully using force. And um, uh, this is not really updated, but Indian, the tablet computer initiative for students in India using four systems, US $35 tablets. And uh, in Russia, uh, they are moving to Linux and they have moved. So, and um, the world's probably top five uh, supercomputers they run on Linux. Uh, French government announced that it will completely move to force by 2015. It is not that the French government does not have money to pay for software. They are moving to force for the reason, as I have said, about security and, uh, and the other reason is robustness and, and uh, the virus factor is also there. Uh, Iceland and Russia, Russian schools are uh, moving to Linux. So the this is how you feel when you go through a set of uh, virus attacks in your computer. You feel like breaking your computer apart. And uh, we have all gone through that situation when you are uh, not meeting, your, when you are uh, approaching a deadline, especially if it is your work. And uh, uh, so uh, the, the question that now comes to your mind is that, uh, if we are using Linux, then what happens to the, all these application softwares that you have been using? For example, for your office productivity, you use something like Microsoft Word usually, Excel, Access, PowerPoint. But there's Open Office, of course, there, which you have just used. <coughs> and uh, it is not that bad. It does the job quite well. And uh, there are other uh, problems and alternatives. So, for example, Blender is an alternative to Maya, 3D Max, uh, uh, Photoshop alternative is GIMP. So, some of those softwares, uh, for example, <coughs> uh, Microsoft Office, it can also be installed on Linux. So, there's something called Windows Emulator, and using that and play on Linux, you can install some of these softwares and games as well. But there are these alternatives which are usually good for students as well, like 
GIMP is, of course, it will never be on that uh, level as Photoshop. Is Photoshop is a professional software. But in a school or university, when you want to do some basic features, <coughs> basic, uh, you want to play around with basic things, then GIMP can help you do the job. Uh, the issue is that Photoshop costs is quite costly, and we cannot, uh, everybody cannot afford that much of software license. But I think in this country, anyways, uh, probably rough estimate 80 to 90 percent of this, most of our software is uh, pirated software. And you will go into very big organizations, including some of the government departments, uh, it's pirated software. So the other thing is that with open source software, the ethical issues in uh, computer science information systems, we teach ethics in the university and in all our uh, the government uh, departments and uh, the schools uh, must use that idea and not uh, knowingly use pirated software. The problem is that because there is lack of knowledge in, uh, uh, in uh, this area in the country, then sometimes you don't even know that you are using pirated software. You just told some uh, technician to come and hey, your computer is not working, can you format and install it? And the guy, whatever the antivirus or the <coughs> Windows software that was installed, is actually not the genuine copy. And you have actually paid money for the genuine copy. So it is good to know a bit of background of what you are actually paying for. So uh, there are a number of operating systems and uh, there are uh, you can have a read of that. And uh, uh, for programming, uh, there's alternatives as well, and, and Eclipse, NetBeans, CodeBlocks, IDE. So this is just, uh, just a screenshot of FreeCAD, which is similar to OpenCAD, and can be very easily used in our schools, high schools, and even uh, in our university. There's 3D modeling of things, and. Uh, very professional software available for free and AutoCAD is of course thousands of dollars and this is Blender this is the famous character from Lord of the Rings <laughs> without the color right so it looks a bit uh, ugly in a way but um, you can see that there's a lot of work done and this is done in Blender so you can use Blender which is open source to make commercials small clips for something that you are trying to uh, sell so, and uh, of course, you, we are now in the, for, uh, in the, the era of uh, mobile computing, so everything we want an app, we are a bit lazy to carry around with a big uh, tablet around, and of, of course it is more efficient to just work with a small phone. So uh, how do you make applications in your phone? We use open source software such as Eclipse to make uh, Android applications, okay? So uh, if you come to open uh, day next week, we'll give the demo on that. Uh, then there's uh, LibreOffice. You have already seen these diagrams. Um, and uh, so Ubuntu Linux versus Linux Mint. So this is the, the interface of uh, uh, Ubuntu Linux. And you can see it looks, it is more close to probably uh, Android. So its uh, look and feel is more close to Android. And Linux Mint, uh, we, have, we are using the Cinnamon desktop. The Cinnamon desktop and there is Kate uh, Mate desktop and KDE desktop. There are a number of flavors of desktops you can also install in Ubuntu. But this is the Unity 3 Unity desktop. And um, uh, it, is a bit, it has a bit of learning curve. And, uh, so in the beginning we were uh, using Ubuntu, but now we are using Linux Mint because of the desktop. Otherwise, they are basically the same system. Um, so the Times says that my Ubuntu setup is faster than a PC and prettier than a Mac. So uh, this is a bit old graph here, but it shows that uh, Linux Mint and Ubuntu is um, growing in usage, and uh, the Ubuntu uh, 12.04 uh, was released for five year um, backup and recently the 14.04 has been released and Mint 17 is based on the 14.04 I believe. Basically what it means that for the 12.04 if you install it for five years 
they, you can automatically update it. And yeah. after five years, then they will not be automatically updated. Then you have to install the other version, that uh, latest version of that year. Okay. So um, similar to the way Windows 7, Windows 8, and they say Windows XP, they are not giving to gi going to give any updates on Windows XP anymore. So uh, follows a similar method. Linux Mint, you have just uh, experienced. Uh, so uh, Linux in use. So mobile devices, I've already said. Uh, enterprise, web infrastructure. Most of the websites in the world are running on Linux servers, including Facebook, um, Twitter, and these large websites, they are all using, using Linux for themselves. So data centers and for supercomputing. So we have already seen this video. Right, and um, now we can discuss a bit about how free and open source software can reduce costs for the medical sector, government uh, agencies. Uh, if you are having so many users, let's say that uh, you have more than 1,000 users, you are paying more than software licenses for thousands of computers. Then if you are using force alternatives in big organizations, you are going to save millions of dollars. Uh, and that can be used for better things. Same with the education sector. With the education sector, one thing is that um, um, the education should be free from uh, being dominated by a uh, firm or company. So if you are telling students that uh, this is a Windows computer and that is it, basically you are fixing them, you are not giving them options from primary school or high school. And there are a number of people who don't actually know that there is another operating system apart from Windows. It's good that these days we have tablets coming out, so people are now, oh right, you can do all these things in tablets and phones as well. So. With time, things will change. But our education sector should not use, uh, that's what we are saying as, uh, on I'm saying on behalf of Software Foundation, which I firmly believe that including our high schools and universities, they should give students the option and in the curriculum should also give them the option. So the same with the commercial uh, software sectors and uh, small business groups um, and uh, so if you are going to reduce the cost uh, then uh, the, the other way you are going to reduce the cost is also by saving money on the antivirus suits of course uh, if there are more linux users then probably the virus there will there may be some more virus issues but at the moment we usually don't feel any virus issues so more on the education, I've already talked about it. If uh, universities use force as the main solution in delivering their programs, millions of dollars can be saved. And then basically if universities saving money, then they can basically reduce the fees, right? Reduce the fees because you are actually, you are paying, the students are the ones who are paying for the software.